Hi everybody, welcome to Naval Gazing. My name is Eugene Driscoll of ValleyIndy.org. Today we're going to talk to Amanda Prescott. Amanda is an Ansonia High School senior who is a self-taught special effects makeup artist. She makes gross stuff. If you've ever seen The Walking Dead, most popular TV program on the planet right now, the zombies, all that kind of greasy, gory stuff, creation of special effects makeup artists. So Amanda, after she graduates high school, she wants to uh, go to college and eventually become a professional makeup effects artist working in Hollywood or the TV or movie industry. So just one last thing before we get to the actual interview about the interview. It was recorded during The Great Give May 3rd. The Great Give was an online fundraiser for hundreds of nonprofits in the Greater Valley. And on Facebook, on the Valley Indie Facebook page, that is, we broadcast using Facebook Live something like a dozen interviews over 36 hours. I think we ended up interviewing 24, 25 people over that time. It was a great event. Uh, so anyway, there, there might be references in this podcast to things that were happening then. I've tried to edit it down the best I could, but just bear in mind this was recorded using a USB microphone during the Great Give May 3rd. Okay, without further ado, here is our interview with Amanda Prescott. <laughs> Actually, the final interview of the Valley Indie Great Give webcast 2017. We started yesterday at 7:30 a.m. and we went uh, all day until 1 a.m. this morning. We we're right back at it at about uh, 7:30 again. Uh, that was me talking. In a couple of minutes, you're going to hear some feedback. Uh, and then we've just had, we just ended a Valley Reporters Roundtable. Ethan covered a press conference live. A guy they're trying to deport in Derby. He got to stay. There's been breaking news. Uh, it's just been a whirlwind great give. And uh, if you want to support local news, please do so by donating to the Valley Indy at donate.valleyindy.org. I'm really excited about this particular interview. Uh, we have with us Amanda Prescott. Uh, what, you're, what year are you in in, in in Sonia High School? You're. I'm a senior. You're a senior. Yeah. Uh, Amanda is, I, I found out about Amanda through Twitter via Terry Goldson, who's the high school principal. Mm -hmm. And he had tweeted out a, an image of this uh, young woman with, it looked like a horrible uh, uh, wound on her face. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, this is different for, for Mr. Goldson's uh, Twitter feed. Uh, and I was immediately drawn into it, and it was because Amanda had won an award because you're a self-taught special effects makeup artist. Yes. So what does that mean? If you're, what is a special effects makeup artist? Special effects makeup is pretty much like you simulate gore, fantasy, even sci-fi off of makeup. You can transform actors, random people into characters, which is an awesome, awesome art. And so, and you actually, I mean, it's great, this is a, we're, we're writers, mm -hmm. we're not visual in any way, but you have actually one of your creations, if you could hold that up and let people see, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a severed foot. Uh, and that is the type of work that you're doing, and a, a career you hope to pursue. Yes, as I'm older, um, I'm planning to go to Southern Connecticut State University, and then after that, I was gonna um, get a license in get a license in. Um, I thought that was me. That's okay. We're doing it live, people. <laughs> that scared me. Um, right? Yeah, it scared us both. <laughs> it's it, and I was. The severed foot a, scares me. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Know, I'm so used to it. But I was planning to get a license in special effects makeup and then freelance and become a, like a real artist on movies. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's Southern. The, the, the two, two Southern employees just walked out here the, the, oh, really? the, the, on, on the way out, but that's neither here nor there. So how did you, uh, uh, just first for anybody at home, I'm like my closest friend in the world is this guy Brian Spears. Uh, and so, like, seeing uh, a, a homemade severed foot isn't new to me because uh, I grew up with him, and that's what he always wanted to do. Uh, you know, uh, I, I would assume today, like, sometimes Brian and I talk. Now he does it for a living, and he's in a union. He works on all the Netflix shows. He's done all kinds of movies. And uh, But we always say, like, man, if, you know, we were lucky high school was forgiving when we were there because he would have been uh, taken out of class, we always assume, and, and put somewhere. Because some of the things were, you know, it's 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 severed foot. Yeah. So how did you first express an uh, an interest in it? What 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 was what drew you to this, 
and uh, did mom and dad, who were over here off camera, <laughs> did they ever say, hey, wait a second, Amanda, what's going on here? No, they actually supported me throughout the whole entire process, and they still do. It was funny because um, when I was 12 years old, my brother was cleaning out the bathroom, and then he found a Halloween kit. Old makeup, it was a couple years old. He put it in my room. I went through it. I unknowingly made my first effect. I drew a little cut on my forearm. It looked real. So I took a picture of why, it. Though, why? Do you, I mean, you're 12 years old, but do you have any idea why you decided to express yourself in that way, like that type of art? It sounds crazy. <laughs> I don't know. It's just I always had a love for horror movies, Halloween, so it just felt natural. Almost like I just took the old wax, I spread it on my skin, and I thought, huh, that kind of looks real. And mm -hmm. then why don't I prank a few friends by drawing a line and putting some fake blood? And then they believed it. Uh, and then, and, and your parents uh, off camera? I mean, uh, I mean, you, you guys, you can be heard. I just want to ask you, when you guys saw that, what was your reaction? I felt that she was very talented. You knew right away. Yeah, Mom was like, this is something, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I got worse because I came home from work. And uh, she ran up to me and said, hey, Dad, look at my arm. And the arm's all blue. <laughs> <laughs> Blood's running down. And she has, like, fake stitch. I freaked. I grabbed her and ran her to the hospital. And I looked and said, wait a minute, is that stitch? How did you? And then that's when she, she showed me for the first time that she had done that. I was blown away. That, that is amazing. And it is, like, because my buddy's the same way. Like, you ask him why he does it. And he's like, I don't know, man. I just do it. That's, yeah. that's, it's just something. It's a talent that just came from wherever it came from. Mm -hmm. And that's how he expresses himself. So let's talk about, you said you like horror movies. Yes. Uh, so I assume you probably view horror movies in a different way than like Ethan and I. Yeah. Because you're in it for, you, I mean, you're practical effects. Practical meaning these are, these are, these are man-made or woman-made mm -hmm. uh, uh, special effects. Uh, so what are, what are some of your favorite horror movies? Um, my favorite classical horror movies has to be. The oh, Lost you you Boys. divided. Oh, oh, wait a second. Yeah. That's classical. Is the well, Lost? I thought you were going to say older. Frankenstein. <laughs> no, a genre not debate here. You've got to come on and insult me, Amanda. Or, may <laughs> or maybe, That's... to be fair, at The Exorcist. Okay. No, go with the Lost Boys. Don't let me. Oh, know. Lost Boys. I, yeah. That's up. There, Why the though. Lost Boys? Like, what what is it about that movie? Female, her makeup on their faces, the contortion of their skin the bulging it was so realistic i just fell in love with it the campfire scene when they killed everyone on the beach it sounds very very wrong but it just looked so real but from a movie, yeah. movie magic perspective on how they actually do that it's fascinating it, it's really fascinating it's just it's addicting it's i wanted to create that i wanted to create people into the storyline into the characters which is is this the 1987 Lost Boys? Yes. I'm just looking it up on... What other Lost Boys would it I've be? I've never heard of this now. movie, but... They both, made a couple of remakes. Both Corey's, <laughs> oh, Jason right. Patrick, and yeah. Edward Herman, it and is. Kiefer Sutherland. I, I can't believe I've never uh, seen Directed by, by Joel Schumacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, let me just ask you, because I also do a horror movie podcast on the side. I do not recommend seeking it out. Uh, but I just want to... Texas Chainsaw 1 or Texas Chainsaw 2? Which do you prefer? You know, it's funny. I never saw any of them. Oh, oh okay. All right, all right. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's an acceptable answer. You're like me, then. Yeah. Uh, right. I, haven't saw, I haven't seen a lot of uh, horror movies that are like con that are considered classical or just all-time favorites. Just, I haven't got a chance. I never even saw It. Okay. A remake's well, coming went, out. I never, yeah, saw, I never saw that one either. Yeah. But, so how have you now... What is it? Stephen the, the, the miniseries, right? Or was it a yeah, It was a mini series, okay. yeah. Now yeah, it's yeah, being yeah, remade. Yeah. It's a huge amount of hype coming out because they're they're, okay, yeah, they're, yeah. they're Pennywise, they're, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The creepy clown kind of yeah. put clowns out of business. <laughs> I'm catching oh, up. So, it, it, so at 12 years old, you make that fake wound. Mm -hmm. uh, your mom recognizes talent, as does your dad after you terrified him. <laughs> uh, so you you start to be self-taught. Where are you? Where do you go to learn how to make wounds and how to make uh, special effects? How do you? How does one do that? Well, first I went to YouTube and I saw it. YouTube's an awesome yeah. learning platform. That's how we got this whole setup basically yeah. <laughs> going. Is we just search YouTube for you know live streaming. It's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. And when I was on there, I found out what products to buy, where to buy it, and what I can do with those products in my possession. So when I started making um, simple cuts, I ventured off to think of different wounds I can make myself without referencing from YouTube tutorials and then it correlated to you know starting to create unique original creations and yet what are some of those original creations that that you did that you're particularly proud of that stick out well my all-time favorite 
effect I've made to this day, I made my whole entire hand octopus tentacles. Hmm. It's it's on my page actually. It's it's pretty far up. And that's the the, the uh, Instagram page. Yes. Okay, gotcha. And um, it was actually one of the entries I had for the competition, and it took me eight hours to create that out of wax. And I had so much fun making it. Like my art teacher, she recommended that I turn my hand into octopus tentacles, and I just did it. I turned. It looked like my fingers were contorting into like tails. It looked very disgusting. That's, yeah, I that's creepy. That that's creepy, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in terms of like how you mentioned your art teacher and you mentioned a contest just now, uh, how has uh, when you're 12 years old or 13 years old and you you walk into the school setting, uh, how do they foster or react to this talent you have? Was it recognized as a talent or was it recognized as hey Amanda, what's going on? Turn off these horror movies. <laughs> they never they never stopped me. Like first they recognized it as a talent. But then had an eye like, oh my god, that's so that's just so scary. But they were nothing but supportive. They really love the art I make. Everyone like pretty much follows me. They try to give me um, new creations to make if they have an idea. It's it's really really um, a loving community. They support of you know what I do. Who are some of your like mentors or teachers that have been encouraging you and, and like sort of counseling you? Because I, I would imagine it's hard to. This is not a career track, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. that you can kind of say, all right, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and yeah. I'm going to be a special effects makeup artist. Yeah. It's, it's it's unique. Mm -hmm. uh, so who's helping you out? Well, my art teacher, um, Nancy Bennett, she helps me throughout ceramics to um, enhance my molding techniques so I can sculpt wax you know, far better than I did like maybe last night. She gives me new ideas. She's the one that recommended again doing the octopus effect. Um, a lot of my friends, a lot of my close friends, they give me ideas like, oh, I thought of something, can you do it? And it gives me <laughs> another perspective, what else can I create? How can I create it? Hmm. And so, and then you had mentioned before this contest and uh, that Terry Goldson had mentioned mm -hmm. on Twitter. Describe what that contest was mm -hmm. and uh, and what did it mean? What did you would you do in it? And you, I mean, you you did the octopus, but what yeah. did, was it? Did you win or what? what how was it? Okay, what is it? And tell me about it. Well, it was held by another Instagrammer named Rainy Rat, and so she is actually a 16 year old girl. She is extremely talented in special effects makeup. She's from Australia, and so this was her first competition that she held together. She formed it by herself. She contacted other pages to um, get together a prize of worth over six hundred dollars in makeup. And then she had the competition about originality. Everyone from different art forms, um, beauty, special effects, body painting, to create something that has never been done before. It was it was very interesting. It was it was actually really hard to think of stuff that has never been done before. So I had to really dig down and deep, like, dig down deep and think of interesting stuff. Along with the um, octopus, I thought of like. Uh, you saw Wolverine, right? No. What, which one? We'll Wolverine? Oh, well, yeah, with, uh, with Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Jackman. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I misheard you for a second there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I had like a toolbox full of nails from my dad, and I made it look like um, I had claws coming out of my arm. I had it where like my arm, my hand was a hook. Okay. I've made. I just want to say how like disappointed you looked when I first said no that I hadn't seen you. <laughs> you're like you were ready to walk out. <laughs> yeah. You were to send out a negative uh, Instagram uh, message to your forty thousand followers yes. saying this is a joke. But no, no, I saw it. So <laughs> that is cool. But yeah, I made like. So how do they faces. how do they decide uh, who who won? Was it through voting or like? Uh, the, the, the contest that you're talking about. She was actually the only judge, so she, okay, it was so her Okay, so it's her decision. thing, gotcha, yes. okay. And so over the course of the month, everyone from every different type of art was posting different stuff. So she decided who posted the most original stuff. Um, it was about, if she saw something that was done before, it didn't really count. So I entered about 12 to 13 unique makeups. And then wow. it got me the victory. So how many, I mean, 12 to 13 unique yeah. makeups, how many uh, hours did you put in creating what you created? If I had to total them up, I'd say about a week's worth. Like, my last one, I made a prosthetic hand. I hollowed it out, and I put a robotic animatronic little toy, and I filled it up with fat guts, and then I made a video where I cut it open, and I was moving the hand at the same time. 
and that one took me about two days. So that's pretty extraordinary, because from what I understand, like eavesdropping on my the guys that I know who, who do special effects makeup, like animatronics is like a whole other thing. Often, yeah. usually, like you're 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 either good in the practical sort of gore stuff, mm -hmm. and then so you're combining it all though. So you're you're touching upon a little of everything. A little bit. Like I didn't make the um, animatronic hand. I just had it laying around for. Years and I was just like, I have <laughs> to do, use yeah. it in something. Hey, yeah, you, what are you gonna do with this extra fake yeah, hand? Yeah, I just had to use it in something. So I think of, I, I think I'm more of a practical effects type of artist than more animatronic. So now, hey, Justin, uh, Courtney I'm Benedetto, sorry. we have a comment. Oh, Courtney nice. Benedetto says, "Yay, Amanda, you're incredible. Keep up the awesome work." And then an emoji of some, uh, smi some sort of smiley face. So oh, that's thank good you. To see. <laughs> yeah, and that's really I, nice. I, I, we, I posted a, a link directly to your Instagram mm -hmm. account just in the comments. So if you're watching and you want to click mm -hmm. that link, you could see some of these creations. We'll and pick I'm you up like five new followers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, probably a little more. I'm glad I didn't eat recently because these are terrifying. Oh, yeah. so in terms of, you know, like I, I was saying, I'm somewhat familiar with, with what you're aspiring to do for a living because I know some guys who do it. When I was a kid, right, I'm 43, you know, I graduated high school in 1992, and in those days it was like Fangoria Magazine, because there was no internet. You'd read Fangoria Magazine, right, and what was cool about Fango was that makeup artists were rock stars, you yeah. know, like, like Rick Baker, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it was like American Werewolf in London, and The Howling, and The Thing, you know, mm -hmm. were, those were like Tom Savini, they were yes. rock stars. Yeah. Do you, is there like, uh, I mean, I'm surprised to hear there's like this internet community mm -hmm. of young people doing all this type of, of special effects makeup and, and other types. Mm -hmm. uh, were there any special effects makeup artists from that era that you're familiar with? Or is it more, uh, more contemporary things that you're, that you're looking at? Definitely Tom Savini. I love his work. And also his pupil, um, Greg Nicotero. Oh, sure. They, yeah, yeah. yeah. K&B, they were like, yeah. Yeah. I, I love his work. I love his work on The Walking Dead and um, with Quentin Tarantino Films and mm. with k &B Studios. They do an amazing job at Django Unchained, Hateful Eight, Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill. It was all amazing. What do you think, uh, in terms of practical effects, what's the best practical effects horror movie you've seen? Hmm. And I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah. I, I didn't send you any questions in advance. I'm just wondering. I'd say... I'm and probably going to think of a better one later. I was going to say, <laughs> let, like, put a caveat out there being like, I'm going to change my mind five minutes later. Yeah. We all do. So, yeah. But w w what pops into your head, I guess? Kill Bill. That is a great movie. Mm -hmm. That is just, yeah, everything about it is good. Yeah. At the scene where they, where um, Beatrix Kiddo had to fight the uh, crazy 88, there were so many actors, so, ma so much people to put makeup on, so much animatronics to have on the floor. It was, it was just a gory scene. It was just... Is that the one awesome. where they're like, they're, it's in like the Japanese style, like yes. there's paper doors mm -hmm. and yeah, they're all it's coming down like the stairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. take off on the old Bruce Lee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's my just, just, yeah, just the choreography of all that, yeah. much less the effects just seems... Mm -hmm. And have you had the chance to, uh, at this point, I mean, you're a senior at Ansonia High School, uh, to go on set, uh, visit any movie sets or anything like that? No, not once. That's Actually, amazing. Yeah. So it's like, this is all just... Uh, and, and how do you think you're going to, you were talking generally about how you're going to pursue this career. Mm -hmm. uh, are people at Antonia High School like helping you? Like, do, you? do you go to a guidance counselor now and say, like, hey, here's what I want to do? Like, how are you going to uh, set that path forward to achieve your goals? Well, it's, like, how do you even set up that path, I guess? It's all about connections. Like, I have, I know a friend that's an animator. She animated my watermarks, so that kind of photos in my The panda outfits. that yes. we just saw? Oh, yeah, I noticed she that. She drew okay. it and animated it. And um, I have a friend that wants to be a director. So I'm going to keep in cl close contact with them. So, I mean... Are these local friends? Yes. They're like, oh, so there's a whole like filmmaker community going yeah. on. Like, oh, that's nice. really cool. They're okay, in the drama club. Nice. And, like, at, at Ansonia High School? Yes. Very cool. Okay. They are very, very talented. They are so creative at what they do. And pretty soon we're all going to work together for prom night car crash simulation. All right. This month? I just saw oh, it drove yeah. by the uh, high school. It's going to be May sixteenth. Yep. So if you're if you own a scanner in Ansonia and you hear car crash at the high school, May sixteenth. Oh yeah, that always makes uh, sense. Don't new. don't post that on our Facebook page. <laughs> just uh, FYI. So you're going to contribute your your art to that. Yes. Uh, as as a sort of a learning experience for others. That's mm -hmm. pretty okay. That's interesting. So I wanted to ask you about the show Face Off. Uh, yeah, is that a 
Oh, I'm interested just here. Do, do you watch it? What are your impressions of it? I actually am not caught up with Face Face Off. I watched the older seasons, and they are unbelievably talented. The amount of time they're given to do the makeup that they make is unbelievable. They are masters of special effects. It's just my my jaw drops every time I watch the show. It's just amazing. And it's just like the the time they have. It's yeah. just it's crazy. And that's a reality it's, show for oh yeah, makeup so good. Artists, yeah, it's, right? a, it's yeah. not the John Travolta Nicolas Cage film. Just to be clear. No, no, it's yeah, just, uh, it's which is you know. That's a great movie. Probably, <laughs> that's a great movie. I don't. I you don't, say so. It's yeah. It's a reality show. Think of Top Chef, but it's yeah, yeah, like yeah. severed arms. I and think. Yeah, I like think that. I've, I've heard you talking about. It's on. Now. It's on. What? It's on the sci-fi, sci-fi. Or whatever it's called now. Mm-hmm. They've changed their name. That's why. I thought would it. you go on that show if you were offered, or would you think like? Because that's that's a whole other. I mean, there would be a lot of pressure. I think. Would you go on that show if they offered it to you? After years and years of practice, mm-hmm. after I'm claim a professional and that I know how to wardrobe and create stuff in a short amount of time because I know that's even a requirement when you're working on set for a movie makes make a certain thing by a certain date so I feel like after years in special effects and after numerous jobs I think that I can hopefully take on (laughs) face off someday and can you go through again? You had mentioned earlier you're going to go southern next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me again your your plan going forward, because uh, I'm an old man and it just goes in and out. So please repeat yourself. You're going to go to southern mm-hmm. next year. To and I was going to get my bachelor's in studio arts. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then after I achieved that, I was going to go to either the Tom Savini School in Pennsylvania or the Cinema Makeup Art in Los Angeles and get my um, certification for special effects makeup. And then, uh, in terms of let's let's talk for a second about the Instagram following. Uh, when I, I was emailing uh, your your mom before you came on here, who's off camera right over there. Thank you very much for getting back to me. I appreciate it. Uh, and she had mentioned, you know, here's her link to her Instagram account, and I I click on there, and you have forty eight thousand followers, which it was like wow. Because on one hand, I'm like really happy for you, and then there's a self-centered part of me that's like, oh, what am I doing with my life? Because we're an online newspaper. We don't have anywhere close to that. How did you build that following up? And I guess, is there a whole uh, Instagram world that is into what you do, like this special effects makeup? There's a huge community full of special effects artists, so I'm self-taught professional. Like, all you have to do is make an account, make it public so everyone can see, and post your work and use appropriate hashtags so if anyone were to search it they can find your post and then that's when likes, follows, comments, fans accumulate. So originally my sister walked me through how to use Instagram and I already had a full library of art that I've never shared before. So I uploaded it maybe once, twice a day. People started to like it and then I kept going with my art and eventually everyone and does it help you? Like, do you follow other special effects makeup yes. uh, artists? And is it is it sort of a learning tool for it you? It is. It is. I, I like seeing other art styles on there. Like, granted, it's still special effects makeup, but everyone has their certain type of style that I like to acknowledge and appreciate. And they find new creative ideas that um, that's so inspiring to see. Like, they come from the same place that you did, but from across the world somewhere. Mm. And you can talk to them by you know, mm. by your phone. It's it's awesome. You can develop friendships on there. Like it's a really loving community. Yeah, right. So yeah. we always see kids on their phone nowadays and, mm-hmm. and we're like, ah, oh, look at that kid, he's got his head buried mm-hmm. in his phone. Yeah. And I was like, hey, maybe they're uh, charting a path for their future profession yeah. with somebody in Australia. So we shouldn't yeah. be so quick to judge, right? <laughs> yeah. So how about The Walking Dead? Let's talk about The Walking Dead because that's like the biggest thing in the horror world yeah. and, and I guess in special effects makeup too mm-hmm. because, I mean, every week, uh, what I one of the things that I like about that show is that there'll be callbacks to like classic zombies out of the Romero stuff. You have like Bub has been there. I think they've had a reference to like every famous uh, uh, zombie that's ever been yeah. on film. Are, are you a big fan of the show? Uh, uh, what Do you have any particular makeups that you've seen or, or gags? that you've seen on that show that you're particularly fond of? I am most fond of, um, well, it might be a spoiler alert. Like, ah, maybe. whatever. We don't, there's not so good. But um, the actor that played Glenn, how he died by um, the the hammer to the head. Oh, Lucille. Yeah, he, 
I think it was Nicotero, he made a prosthetic where it looked like his eyeball popped out and his head was caved in. It looked so real. He portrayed that injury so realistically with talking in tongues, not talking, speaking proper English. It was just jaw jaw bringing. Also, when Carl got shot in the eye, it looked like it. It looks so real. I just the, I love those two. The the, the 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 scene uh, uh, with Lucille, which is like probably the most famous uh, uh, scene in The Walking Dead now, yeah. and probably one of the most famous scenes in television of the last twenty years. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that, and like the ending of uh, ending of The Sopranos, and who shot Jr. in like nineteen eighty one. But uh, I couldn't watch it. Like I was just like, like oh, it was too much for me. I just had to turn away, and I, I just and I was like kind of mad at the show. I was part of that <laughs> fan base. Was like, yeah, that's enough, Walking Dead. That was just over the line. Mm-hmm. But you watched it. Does like it, it didn't have that effect on you? You were watching it from sort of how did they do that, and what can I learn from it? Like, yeah. And don't let me put words in your mouth, but explain to me like how, how you watched it. It was pretty much that. I, well, I was mostly nervous because. I wanted that particular character to live, but <laughs> also I just, I was wrapped into the scene like if it were real, if it looked real, if it felt real, and it did. And then what's so cool about, again, Instagram, as when I went back on there and I did hashtag Walking Dead, they posted step by step how they made the eye, how they oh, made no kidding. everything. So yeah. they know, oh wow. Yeah, so they're even in tune with people that try to do it themselves, so we can all learn from it and appreciate it. That's yeah. fascinating. And then what, what is your assessment of the show? I'll just ask uh, as someone who watches it, uh, did, did you like this particular season? Were you disappointed? Was there anything that bothered you about it? It bothered me because I saw Rick break. He was kind of overpowered by some other person, and he seemed he's, he's still a strong character, but the fact that the first time he's cornered, he doesn't know what to do, and everyone's life is in danger. Well, really in danger this time. It's, it's just crazy that he's this pretty much under attack. And then in terms of, are you like a constant person, are you are constantly watching horror movies or is it more you're just off creating uh, your own creations? I'm more creating my own creations, but if a horror movie catches my eye, I'll definitely watch it. But I still have that goal to watch the classic horror movies that everyone's like, you didn't watch it. Mm-hmm. Why? But but it is yeah. fascinating because you're talking to you. Yeah, because I had assumed like, oh, you must watch every single horror movie that's ever <laughs> been made. But no, it's just like it's a talent that uh, you just do. So you yeah. don't necessarily have to watch uh, the, the, you know every horror movie that's been made. It's just something you're going to do regardless. And yeah. that, that's sort of fascinating to me. It plays against that that stereotype. Mm-hmm. Uh, although, but what about Dawn of the Dead, 1978, George Romero. You're a fan of that? Is it, have you yeah, seen that yet? <laughs> you wouldn't let you? Watch you would, <laughs> at the time. At the time, I forgot. <laughs> there is that whole, yeah, it's, you got to strike that balance, I guess, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know how you do that. That is so uh, uh, fascinating uh, to me. Ethan, did you have as like... Yeah, oh, I just want to say else? Andrew Sorry. Prescott the third, maybe a relative... Says good stuff my brother. on Facebook. Okay, good. So, oh, yeah, let's go. How many brothers Facebook and sisters do you have? Like, what, how you go through your family? Let's throw out some of the brothers and sisters. You mentioned a brother mm-hmm. and a sister. We know Andrew Prescott. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Who else is there? I have my other brother, Andrew. He's 21, and I have an older sister, Raquel, and she's 23. 24. And- it, don't get it wrong. <laughs> nobody knows. No, Raquel, nobody knows. I don't know. The, uh, and, and she's the one who taught you how to do uh, the Instagram. Yes. So that's, she kind of tutored you in, in that. Yeah, and my brother, I have to give him a lot of credit. He is a cameraman. He, like, shoots all of my videos. We're right now in the process of starting YouTube, and he has been nothing but helpful in terms of, you know, trans- transforming my account into something bigger where I show people how I do my effects and he also um, if he has a great idea I try to do it and he is an amazing supportive brother so is my sister oh that's nice yeah. that's see, mom and dad that's there yeah. feel nice right mm-hmm. how about in terms of have you reached out to any uh, special effects uh, horror people to sort of tap their brain you always hear like uh, I'm gonna forget their names but I've heard stories where a random uh, a young person will will write and they'll, they'll write right back and, and mm-hmm. get nice. Have you reached out to anybody and had any contact with them? Um, no one of, like, status of, like, you know, rock star as, like, and, you know. The legends. Yeah, but um, over over um, Instagram, I've reached out to a number of special effects artists. We share our ideas. We share how we do stuff. Or if someone's stuck at some place. I've been stuck plenty of times. I don't know what else to create. We, you know, push each other to... Um, do a little bit more, give each other other ideas, so it's it's really, really helpful. 
That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Amanda, I want to thank you uh, so much uh, for your time. You know what? I, I want to ask mom and dad. Are, are, you, are you guys movie people? Were you movie fans or, or artists yourselves growing up? Or where does this come from? Uh, it's a little bit of both. My, my wife has a very strong um, art background, so I think she inherited a lot of that. I am a huge movie buff, so I probably twisted her mind <laughs> over the years. So it's a combination <laughs> of both? Yeah. So we, we both have, she's gotten a lot of, and improved upon a lot of things that we like to do, just being her. So it's, it's been a great way you know, to watch her grow and get so talented at this. It's been fantastic. That's awesome. Thank you for uh, allowing Amanda to, to come yeah, on and yeah. talk to us. And, and Amanda, thank you for taking the time uh, to do this random thing uh, you know, on Main Street and Ansonia. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. Uh, our pleasure. Follow Amanda on, on Instagram or, or Amanda, hey, help us out. Get us a couple of follow. I mean, we don't even have yeah. Instagram. So, uh, I'll make a post. I'll make a post. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Take care. Okay, there you have it. That was Amanda Prescott, a special effects makeup artist and an Ansonia High School senior, getting ready to graduate any day now, I, uh, I imagine. So, just to wrap up, uh, I wanted to acknowledge the music that you hear on today's program it was provided by Pat Gorman, a uh, guitarist, singer, musician, also a former colleague of mine at the Patent Trader, a former newspaper, now out of business in Mount Kisco, New York. So thanks, Pat, for letting us do that. And, uh, you know, the one other little programming note when we did Amanda's video, when it was broadcast uh, on Facebook, I realized after the fact that, uh, there goes an ice cream truck, after the fact I realized that we were having video problems at the end of the Great Give, that about the 30th hour, 35th hour, we started to run into some technical problems. I actually haven't gone back to figure out what they were. Uh, I've taken a break from the Facebook Live for a little bit. So anyway, I just I say all that. Uh, I just wanted to apologize to Amanda and her parents if they had. I was not aware of that when it was happening. Basically, you could hear the audio, but the uh, video was skipping or uh, buffering, essentially. So it was nice to be able to extract the audio and post it for your listening pleasure. Okay, thanks, everybody, particularly our readers and our listeners on WNHH in New Haven. This is Eugene Driscoll for navel-gazing, and we will talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.